Buck Holmes, A Game of Shadows, Move Review. The year is 1981. 1891. The elusive Moriarty is challenging Sherlock Holmes. He's not hiding all, you might say he's hiding in plain sight. He's a rather reputable college professor and scientist. But Sherlock is convinced that he is up to something. And he's certain that Moriarty is connected to the string of recent bombings of major cities. Although, you know, the press keeps blaming it on anarchist groups. Watson is getting married, and with Sherlock around, that's sure to go off without a hitch. And the, the entry point into finding out the truth about Moriarty and, you know, actually preventing whatever he's planning comes in the form of a gypsy fortune teller played by Nomi Rapash. Does that sound about right, Wes? The girl formerly known as Elizabeth Salander, that is, until, you know, Rooney Mara claimed that title, who does a really good job as this slightly kick-ass and, you know, kind of mysterious, which, you know, we knew that she could play that, kind of gypsy chick. And she also does a really good job of speaking in this bizarre, silly language that, you know, makes sense to no one. You know, in this movie, too, not only the Millennium Trilogy. This movie really lives up to the first. It, you know, the first one kind of set up who Sherlock is and had him solving something that, you know, to us seems just unfathomable. And, you know, he pretty much did it with ease. And this time he's pitted against someone who is, you know, it's, it's a game of wits. This is two men on equal footing, you know, really challenge, excuse me, challenging each other. And it's just a really fun battle between them. The casting is phenomenal. You know, Moriarty, I don't know the actor's name, and I'm not sure I've seen him in anything else, but this guy is Moriarty. I, I don't know where they found him or how exactly, but he just, he personifies it. There is this subtle kind of intellectual strength to him where it just really feels like this guy could match wits, wits with Sherlock's and Sherlock. We also have Sherlock's brother and you know played by just again perfect casting Stephen Fry. It's just you couldn't have chosen someone better to have and it's just you know excellent character. He's 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 a side character but he's just so much fun. You know, the moment that he and Sherlock, you know, meet up for the first time in the movie, the two of them go back and forth on these little observations about each other that, you know, they've just deduced or they've recently deduced. And, you know, and Watson tries to sort of join in, and it's just, it's, it's a lot of fun. And with that also the quirk of, you know, similar to the first movie, we again, just have these characters, just really memorable characters that are not, you know, entirely positive or negative, just they're memorable because they're, they're quirky also without being just excessively, I don't, there was no, there were no characters in this that were obnoxious. The British humor very much makes a return with, you know, plays on words and, 
excellent dialogue, really brilliant dialogue, and you gotta really pay attention to keep up with this movie. Not just not just the dialogue and you know, exposition-y stuff, but something is constantly happening. You know, if you ever really get a time to take a breath, which you do, it's because you're staring at a gorgeous establishing shot of some new location. And this also has some really fun, you know, locations. Paris, Switzerland, it's just, it's gorgeous. And the, the pace is really, it's fast, but it's not excessively fast. It, you know, there are a couple of things that you'll need some time, you know, to really work out and to piece together, but the movie doesn't, it doesn't like leave you behind and it doesn't feel like you're, you know, you, you can follow the basics of it and, you know, it's not, you know, it, you're along for the ride. And it is very much a ride. This is again an action adventure with a good mystery along the way, but really it, you know, it's action adventure. You've got, you know, big action scenes. I would say the action scenes are bigger in this, but without without losing perspective and without it being, you know, too much. The, the visual style of Guy Ritchie also makes a great return. The, the this has a kind of fun relationship with the first one. It's it's very clearly a sequel, and it makes some hints towards the first one, but it kind of plays with them, you know. You are you see scenes where you're thinking, ah, now it's gonna go like this, just like in the first movie, and then they kind of turn the tables, and you're like, what happened? And they do this really well, you know. The boxing in the first one with Sherlock, completely outwitting the other guy, and, you know, making these little observations and decisions at breakneck speed and figuring out exactly how to do it. He does that in this movie, but they toy with it some. And we have the, you know, similar to the first, there's there's a bit where Sherlock is by himself at a restaurant and he just continues to eat. You know, it doesn't bother him that that's kind of the... And as you could probably figure out, this really isn't a spoiler, it happens in the first, I don't know, 10-15 minutes, Irene basically just returns just in time to get knocked off. But, you know, that also provides some motivation for Sherlock, because, you know, they had that kind of fun flirtation thing going on in the first movie, where she was also quite dangerous to him, and, you know, she had to go make way for, you know, the gypsy sim. The I suppose that pretty much everything I had to say about the movie without spoiling anything. But yeah, just if you like the first one, definitely also go for this one. It's and if you didn't watch the first one, I would definitely suggest to watch that one first. I'm this really doesn't recap what happened in the first. I suppose you could just watch this one, but I would definitely say you'd be missing out because the first really does a great job of setting up who Sherlock Holmes is and this one really takes that and says, but he's not the only brilliant mind out there and not all of them are, you know, fighting off for our, you know, our side. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.